I don't know if you know me or you don't know me, but I'm just going to tell you who I am, a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And by his grace, um, and um, as you, you call it in England, gynecologist in the United States, you call them OBGYN. I am joining you, walillah alhamd, from St. Louis, Missouri, in the middle of the United States, which is nine o'clock our time. And uh, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Allah has blessed me with being a physician also, with ability to study his religion, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, study his book. So I cannot be grateful enough to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is a productive Muslim? And those of you who may know me or have listened to me, it's going to be an interactive. So I am going to put you all as a gallery view in a second after I share some words with you. And then I am going to be asking you questions and open it for a question. Because what is a productive Muslim? Anytime you learn anything, and this applies to Islam, to religion, um, to whatever a profession you are studying to be, or whatever profession you are already in, always look at the basics. And this is how I was taught, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught me. And even in the, in the most complicated topics, especially in Islamic studies, they always the teachers teaches you, look at the basics. So look at the title, Productive and Muslim. That's number one. And I want every one of you to ask yourself a question right, right now before we start, which is, are you a productive Muslim? Question mark. And the best way is grade yourself. Don't put it on the screen. Put it for yourself. Are you a productive Muslim? And the answer is either I'm going to put a number, either yes or no. And if you're going to say yes, put a number. What are you? 100% productive, 50, 20, whatever. Or I have no idea. I don't know. And that's why I'm attending this talk, so I can learn, alhamdulillah. So let's go to the basics. What is productive and what's a Muslim, right? Let's start with the easy one. We are in a Muslim conference, mashallah, tabarakallah. So what is a Muslim? A Muslim, technically, the person, she or he, who, be, who believe the five pillars of Islam. That's a Muslim. Allah, la ilaha illahu, Muhammadun Rasulullah. I perform salah, I fast Ramadan, I pay zakah if I am eligible, I go to hajj if I can, I'm a Muslim. And this, then this second part definition applies to everybody. I am a Muslim, I declare I'm a Muslim for the beautiful sisters joining us. If you're wearing your hijab, you're doing it publicly, you are declaring it. For the brothers, if, they, if you, some people, obviously are Muslims, some people say they are Muslims or they know you are a Muslim. So here I am. Real Muslim are, so this is the definition of Muslim. The real Muslim, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ دِينًا مِمَّنْ أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ لِلَّهِ Who has better religion than that, than that person who أَسْلَمَ وَجْهَهُ Submit his face to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah said this in Surah An-Nisa, meaning I submit to the will of Allah. Then I am practically a Muslim and I believe in the five pillars of Islam, then I am Muslim by definition. So let's say all of you, all of you, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, fulfilled the Muslim. Alhamdulillah, the technical and the practical. Now come to productive. What is productive? Productive production is you have an ingredient, you have something, and you bring out of it the best of it. Look at it very simple. So here I am. I have one hour. Let's talk about time because time is usually the issue these days. So I have one hour. One hour. It's a Saturday. This one hour, I can be a productive Muslim. I can be, ah, uh, I can be absolutely not. What does it mean? In this 60 minutes, I can be, in this 60 minutes, got 6,000 good deeds, 6,000 rewards, 6 million, 100, 50, 10, 0, or minus. That's the first thing you're going to look at. Production, production is, look at it as a math, as a math. So in your hour, are you productive? 
number one. Then you're going to come and say, well, of course I'm productive. Well, here I am, I'm studying. Here I am, I'm working. Here I am, I'm cooking. Here I am, I'm changing the diaper of my child. Here I am, I'm teaching. Is that productive? In the regular world, the answer is yes. The productive Muslim, not necessarily. And this is how you're going to change the way you look at things. What do I mean by that? Meaning, when I am changing, let's say, a diaper, when I am studying for my exam, when I am helping someone, when I am a volunteer in this beautiful conference, am I productive? If you remove the word Muslim, the answer is yes, for sure. If you brought the Muslim with it, I'm going to tell you it depends. What does that mean? The question is, in everything you are doing as a productive Muslim, why you are doing it? Why you are doing it, number one. And number two, how you are doing it. That's how it is. I actually explained to you one of the principles of Aqidah, principle of the creed, what we believe in, in actions, in a very simple, inshallah, way. Meaning, I'm studying for my exam. I went and did my salah on time, but only did my salah. I was so overwhelmed. I did not have really enough time to do a proper salah. Or in that hour, I was so tight in time in studying that I could not do my sunnah at that time. I'll do it afterward, after this hour. Am I a productive Muslim? You're probably going to say, no. You, you rushed in your salah. But I did it. And I did the obligation. And, but I didn't do the sunnah yet. Yet. Pay attention to this. Can I be a productive Muslim? Or I did not study for that exam. This one hour I have, the last hour, I went and I did a whole long, let's say, Luhur Asr, one of the obligatory salah, and I prolonged my sunnah, and I did my Quran, and I did not do, do study for my exam. Am I a productive Muslim? So let's go back to the why and how. Why? There is only one answer. There is only one answer. Any other answer you're going to answer, the production is went south, as we say, as Muslim. If I am not doing anything that I am doing has to be pleasing to Allah. If I am not doing it for Allah, please pay attention to this. If you are or I am not doing it for Allah and for Allah only, only, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ You only we worship. You only, we seek help. That's the production. So if I am studying, it's one hour, I'm overwhelmed. I feel I'm not gonna pass. This is so hard. I'm really getting into my anxiety. If I am gonna take a breath and I'm gonna say, Ya Allah, I am studying because I want to be a successful Muslim, because that's what pleases you. And I'm not gonna be successful Muslim unless you help me and you put barakah in my time, you put blessings in my time. It's not gonna happen. You are a productive Muslim, even if you failed tomorrow on your exam. Because the end product, the end product is what did the right angel wrote and how much. So when I am studying, I'm doing something halal. Remember why and how. How, what are you doing? Is it pleasing to Allah? How are you doing it? Is it pleasing to Allah? I'm studying. That's something pleasing to Allah as long as was not on the expense of the obligation. That's why I gave you the example of the obligatory salah. So here I am, I have one hour, it's Maghrib time. I went, did my salah, came back, focus on my study. Focus on my study. I didn't read Quran. I, I did barely quickly my adhkar of salah. As I was coming back to my room, I was doing my adhkar of salah. I sat and I studied. And I said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I'm studying because that's something pleases you. 
because the Mu'min al Qawi khayru min al Mu'min al Da'if, as the Rasul alayhi sallatu wasalam taught us, the strong believer better than the weak believer. Wa fi kullin khayr, and both have good. And what is a strong believer? What is a strong Muslim? What is it that you're educated, that you have the power that Allah gave you internally strong and externally strong? Education is absolutely one mean of power. Productive Muslim in this hour, you can do six or 10 ibadah, 10 actions of worship and you're studying. You are very productive. Your niya, why you are studying is for Allah. How you are studying for Allah and pleasing to Allah. I am not wasting rather even a pen or a paper or the time or the energy. I am conscious about this because I am saving the earth because the earth is Allah, is not mine. Don't spread mischief in earth. I am, as I start to study, Bismillah. Productive Muslim, we just did dhikr, that's plus. As you opened and you're finding it very difficult, absolutely challenging, or it's very easy, but I'm not understanding it. And you turn and says, Ya Allah, la sahla illa ma ja'altahu sahla. Ya Allah, nothing easy, but what you make it easy. Productive Muslim. You are reading and then you get tired. You get tired and you're going to get up. This is one, and still in the one hour, and you're going to get up as you got up. And, and in you, your near, your intention, I'm going to take a break because the break will make me stronger and I'll come back and I have more energy to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as long as the break is pleasing to Allah. What you are doing the break, whether you are walking, whether you are going out and take a, a walk, whether you are exercising, whether you're going to the kitchen, getting a water to hydrate yourself, anything you do, this is the equation or as a physician, the recipe that I write. And these days we do it electronically for production is that you look in every moment in your life every moment in your time, every second in your hour, the breath you take, the eye that you use to look with, the tongue that you use to communicate, the ear you use to hear, use it for the sake of Allah and bring your intention in everything you do, then you are absolutely productive and the angels will be rushing to write. Productive Muslim is not the one who is, as we commonly we say, very efficient. She can do 10 things in a time. True. In modern life, in the mundane characters or in the mundane values, absolutely, I'm very efficient. I can answer the phone. I can look and read my email and I can do some. I am very productive. True. But am I productive for my akhirah? Am I productive with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because remember, is the productive Muslim. So don't forget. No, don't forget this and don't forget that. Let's turn it around and see how a Muslim can be non, not productive. A Muslim, alhamdulillah, externally believe in the five pillars of Islam and internally, practically, aslama wajahu lillah, he submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you come to this one hour. Same one hour, same exam. And that person, she or he, look at the paper and says, I can't study. I can't. This is very difficult. Then I'm not productive. Why? Because I did not rely on Allah. I did not rely on Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm a Muslim. I just finished my prayers. I just did my adhkar after salah. But I'm not productive. I did not rely on him. I did not connect everything to him. Then I am not. This comes together. Productive Muslim. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the word production comes in this ayah. Man kana yuridu hartha al-akhira nazid lahu fi harthih. Wa man kana yuridu hartha al-dunya nu'tihi minha wa ma lahu fi al-akhirati min nasibah. Allah said this in Surah Al-Shura. What did he say? 
من كان هم شو ايفر يريد وانت حرث الاخره ذا برودكشن اوف الاخره حرث از بيزيكلي وان يو بلانت اند يو برينج فروتس يو برينج برودكشن يو برينج سمثينج الله سيد ذس هم شو ايفر وانت ذا برودكشن اوف الاخره نزد له في حرثه وي ويل جيف هيم مور اوف هيز برودكشن ومن كان يريد حرث الدنيا and whomsoever want the production of this life, dunya, نؤته منها, he will get it. وما له في الآخرة من نصيب, and there is nothing, no share in the آخرة, in the hereafter. What do you want? Here you go. والله الذي أعلاه, it is so simple. We made it very difficult. And I always, subhanallah, I always look and say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have facilitated our lives and gave us a lot of things these days, a lot of things, a lot of technology. And I always share this on a personal level, right? I was like, if I'm seeing a patient and I want to, um, um, if she calls me and I have to send her a, a prescription, it used to be in the weekend very difficult. You have to call the pharmacy and all these, a lot of time. These days you go on your computer, five minutes, the prescription went electronically, the patient can get it and you're done, or even more, the, the prescription will be delivered to your front door, right? And on a practical, personal level, right? We, For example, when I used to study, right, or prepare for a talk, it used to take forever because you had books, you have to bring the books out and you have to look and do all search. These days, you just go on the internet, all the books are there. Especially when I used to travel, it was so hard because how do you have to carry all these books and sometimes copy the chapter and make these days all everything is on, on your phone. So life, Allah facilitated it for us, made things much easier. My grandmother used to stand one hour washing dishes. These days you put it in the dishwasher and you're done or wash clothes. But if you look at us, we are, le- we are more complainer, we're less productive because we are overwhelmed. And we are overwhelmed because, and that's you put it on the top of the productive Muslim, on the top. As like you baked the cake and you call the cake productive Muslim, now you're garnishing it. And the most important thing that you're gonna put on the top, in the middle, don't rely on yourself. Don't depend on you and your ability and how smart you are, and how much you have, and everything you need is there. No, you rely on one thing. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. كنز من كنوز الجنة. No power, no ability, no change, but by Allah. And Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam said, this statement, كنز من كنوز الجنة. It is one of the treasures of the treasures of Jannah. So productive Muslim comes in life when he or she wakes up to the time they go to bed. Number one, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. I am not gonna be able to do it alone. I cannot. Khuliqa al-insan da'ifa. Human being was created weak. So I can do it. Whatever abilities I have, whatever facilities I have, I can't unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow it. And I always say one plus one, I ask people this question and everybody is like, why she is asking? One plus one equal? If I can ask this question now, one plus one equal? Everybody answer me. Can we do that? Yeah? Yeah. One plus one equal two, right? Okay, one plus one equal? Two. Equal? Equal? Right? Equal to, right? Anybody has any other answer? If you have any other answer than two, write it. See? No. Everybody. It's two. Insha'Allah. Two. If Allah wills. Because if Allah wills, the one plus one can be ten. And if Allah wills, the one plus one become zero. This is what I need to remember. And this is why I give you the simple example. 
So when I am studying and I'm feeling I'm very confident, I'm going to be very productive today, don't do that because it's not in your hand and it's not in mine. It's in his hand. He will put, as we all use this word, the barakah in my time. To have the barakah in my time, to have the one plus one equal two, I have to say, Ya Allah, make it two. Ya Allah, allow it to be two. Ya Allah, allow it to continue. So the productive Muslim, number one, you rely on him. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. That's why I said it in the beginning and in the middle. Man aslama wajahu lillah. Who submit to Allah fully. Fully. And how do you know you have submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are the productive Muslim is not only how much you have done and gained. is when things doesn't go the way you planned. Although I did everything the way it is, everything. I did my homework, as we say here, and it didn't turn out to be. Whether I am cooking and I followed the recipe and everything, and I got the best recipe, the best pot, everything the best. And I'm so confident it's going to come the best. You missed, inshallah. And you missed the most part. You'd, you relied on you, on me, on my ability. And that's not going to bring any fruit, even if you see the fruit for a short period of time. The real fruit, remember, in Al-Akhirah. Man kana yuridu hartha Al-Akhirah. Summarize it. I need to be a Muslim that submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Use my ability. Use what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me. For his sake, rely on him. The end is not in my hand the end in his hand. If it come beautiful, I am grateful to him. I'm not proud of myself. I'm grateful to him. If it didn't turn out to be at all, I failed. The, the recipe turned to be the worst. Everything you're planning didn't come the way you want. What do we say? What did he taught us? Alayhi salatu wasalam. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Qaddar Allah ma sha'a fa'al. Allah decree and whatever Allah decree will happen. That's the productive Muslim. Now ask yourself, are you a productive Muslim? Are you a productive Muslim? Are you a person who whatever you do, whatever you do, you followed this? You did your best. You took all the means, as we say, al-asbab. But your main thing, you're a Muslim. You relied on him and you, you did and you did everything you can and you never believe in your ability rather in him. And wallah ladhi la ilaha illahu. And I said, Wallahi, if you practice this, this is very difficult. And I'm gonna be very honest with you. I would love to see you all. This is extremely difficult, especially for the younger generation. And you're going to tell me why, what's wrong with us. I'm going to say nothing. You're mashallah, tabarakallah. But because you grow up, you grew up in the technology time. In the technology time where everything's so easy to get with a click, with a send, with the one touch, you get what you want. You, we all, including us, get very frustrated now when things doesn't go our way. The technology and the ease fooled us. Let shaitan fooled us that we are in control. And absolutely, absolutely, we are not, not in control. If the COVID-19 had taught us anything, or I will rephrase the question, and I will say, should have, should have taught us anything and there's a long list of lessons. Number one, how weak we are, how lack of control we have, how imperfect we are human being, and how vulnerable we are human being. And Allah exposed it all to us. And how should I respond when I know this reality? Go back to him.
go back to him. Fafir, firru ila Allah. Fafirru ila Allah. Run to Allah. Inni lakum minhu nadhirun mubin. Allah said this in Surah Al-Dhariyat. Firru, run. What is run me? I'm, I'm, I'm going to run. Run, go where? My heart, my focus, my plan, my reward, who I want to please is him. Only him. And if anybody else got happy, alhamdulillah. If they did not get happy, Ya Allah, make them happy. Productive Muslim, inshallah. And I want to stop here because I want to open the floor for questions and answers. But this is what I want from all of you. لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. Get out of your ability and your strength and reliance on you and your family and your wealth and your education. No. Rely on him, the capital H. Ya Rabbi, Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who listen to the word of admonition and make us of those who follow it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make me of those, not, let him not make me of those who remind people of him, subhanahu and I forget him. Jazakumullah khairan. Any question? Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you very much, Dr. Haifa. So I'm just going to ask everyone, uh, I've posted the Slido link in the chat and it's also um, on the screen. And this is where um, you guys can ask your questions. Oh, somebody's already asked a question. And okay. What are the steps to gain more baraka in time? Practical, practical. Number one, number one. What do you think I'm going to say? Anybody? Number one. Live your life in halal. Live your life in halal. And I'm not talking about halal meat. I'm not talking about halal food. Subhanallah, I'm talking about everything. Lower your gaze. Dress properly. Don't look at haram. Don't watch haram. Don't listen to haram. It's very hard these days. May Allah protect us all. We are bombarded with this. But that's what it is. Number one, live your life in halal. Live your life to please Allah. Live your life in the Muslim conduct. You will see it. You will see it. Wallahu These things doesn't, you don't read it in books. These things, you practice it. See yourself, see yourself when you are, you just disobeyed Allah. And we all do. We all are sinners. And the best among the sinners are those who repent. So I just did something not pleasing to Allah. I ran to him. And I asked for forgiveness immediately. My heart ran to him. And Ya Allah, please forgive me. I was weak. Right? And see how Allah will put feeling in you. And how you will be able to do things better. So number one, live your life in halal. Live your life in halal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it in Surah Al-Nahl. And this is actually, uh, they teach you how to live happily. How to live happily, if you want to give a lecture, just go and read this ayah. مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مَنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ فَلَنُحْيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبَةً وَلَنَجْزِيَنَّهُمْ أَجْرَهُمْ بِأَحْسَنِ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ صوت النحل the bees. مَنْ whomsoever, this is a condition. مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا whomsoever does good deed. ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى male and female, man and a woman. وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنْ and they believe. So I need two things. I need to do good deeds. عَمِلَ صَالِحًا live in halal. And I believe. I believe in Allah. I believe He knows me. I believe He will help me. I know He will reward me. What will happen? فَ immediately. فَ for those of you who know Arabic, حرف تعقيب. This is immediately, quickly it's going to happen. فلا لام القسم لام التوكيد فلنحيينه we will and who is we Allah حياة طيبة we gonna make him live good life that's a translation and we will reward them there the best the reward of the best deed they did and scholars like what is حياة طيبة what is a good life and a good life is it's not you have good life is you feel good you feel serene, 
you feel happy, you feel content, you feel what you have is more than what you need. You feel you're so grateful to Allah. You wake up in the morning and you're so happy. Although could be everything around you is not. Or everything around you does not produce happiness, but you are internally. Because amila saliha, good deeds, that's how you get barakah in your time. Don't use the time for haram. You wasted, you're not productive, and it's going to fire back. This is how it is. One sin followed by another sin. And one of the sins, the result of sins is lack of barakah. I, we just, just finished it last month. We did a whole 12 weeks course in Jannah Institute, right? And I taught that on a, on a Sunday morning about sins and their effect on me and the surroundings. And one of the results or, seek or consequences of sin is lack of barakah, no rain, no fruits. Of sins. We never do this one plus one because we think, you know, I need to be more organized in my time. Sure you are, but before you do that, stay away from sins. Don't disobey him because the barakah is from him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said this in Surah Al-A'raf and the word barakah in this verse. وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَى آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ and Allah said this in Surah Al-A'raf, the height. If the people of the town, this is you and me, amanu, they believe, wattaqaw. Wattaqaw is what? What's a taqwa? You put a shield between you and the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What will happen if I believed and I had taqwa? Lafatahna, we will, la, immediately. La mutaqib, right away. Fatahna alayhim barakatin, not barakat, barakatin, blessings. From where, Ya Allah? Min as wal ard From the heaven and from the earth. Walakin kaddabu. They rejected. That's what Allah said. Fa'akhadnahum bima kanu yaksibun. We punished them as a result of what they did. You want barakah in your time? My beautiful brother or sister, my son, my daughter? Obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And obey Allah. I don't want you to be so narrow. Obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not only, alhamdulillah, I put my hijab, I have my beard, I prayed, I fast. That's absolutely necessary, but that's not it. There's way more, way more. How you, how you deal with your parents, how you deal with your siblings, how you deal with the people in the street. How do you, when you eat, how much you waste, how much you don't, how do you treat the earth, how do you treat the animals in everything. When things goes well your way, how do you respond? How do you, how do you react to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And when things doesn't go the right way, how do you respond and react to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? All these amalun salih. Amanu wa taqaw. Ya Rabbi Ami. Any other question? How do we, yeah, very good question. Okay, so um, I'm going to go quickly because I thought that was the only one question because I want to cover as many. How do we persevere through hardship and anxiety? That's a very good question. Hardship is all around us. And subhanAllah, you in England, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you, honestly, and keep you strong. It's very difficult what you all are going through. What did, what did Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala told the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, this is how you learn my beautiful brothers and sisters and, and daughters and sons. When you look at what I'm going through, I have anxiety. I am sick. A, a, a very loved one is very sick. A loved one, I just lost a loved one. All these. Look at what Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam had and how did he persevere? What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him? Fasbir. Fasbir. He said, Fasbir, be patient. Be patient. The promise of Allah is true. That's one. What did he also said? Worship your Lord till death comes to you. We know that what they are saying is really hurting you. 
he, he, that's anxiety. That's not feeling good. What did Allah say to him? Wa'bud Rabbak, worship your Lord. Number one, number one. When I feel down, and we all do, I don't think anyone does not ever have this feeling. Number one, my beautiful brother and sister, run to Allah, firru ila Allah. Go alone to your room. Turn off the phone. Don't listen to what people are saying. Sit down on your on the floor, on your jainamaz, on your musalla, on your sajada. Cry and turn to him and say, Ya Allah, hada abduk, this is your servant. I'm weak. I'm full of anxiety. Allahumma qawini. Ya Allah, make me strong. Make the dua, the, the, the weapon of the believer, we don't use it. The dua, the dua. Ya Allah, everything is crumbling around me. Please keep me strong. Dua and dua and dua. Supplication, supplication, supplications. You are going, walking. Make the dua. You feel down. Make the dua. You're at work. Make the dua. Do you think Allah will not hear you? If my servant asks you about me, I am near. Number one. Number two, a lot of istighfar. Not little. A lot of istighfar. A lot of istighfar. A lot, a lot of istighfar. A lot of asking Allah for forgiveness. And you're going to tell me, but I, I don't know what I did. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Al-istighfar, asking Allah for forgiveness. What, what was the result of it? Sayyidina Yunus out of the middle of the three darknesses. What did he do? He was in the middle of the well, the, the, the whale, I'm sorry. The, 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 the stomach of the whale in the middle of the ocean. Bulumat. What did he say? What did he do? What more anxiety than this? What did he do? La ilaha illa anta subhanak. Inni kuntu min al-zalimin. Ya Allah, there's no God but you. Glorify you. I am a wrongdoer. That's istighfar. Faltaqamahu al-hud. Fa-nabadnahu. He's out. Number one. Dua. Dua. Dhikr. Istighfar. Dua. Dhikr. Istighfar. Reading Quran. And if you're going to talk to people, Talk to those who will keep you strong. Don't talk to people who will make you more anxious. How do I remove myself from bad influence in most polite, polite way? It depends who are this bad influence. If these are your friends, you don't have to be polite. Just cut it off. You, you used, you, your question is beautiful. You said bad influence. Why do I need to be polite and worry about them? I'm not saying don't be polite. A'udhu billah. The Muslims are very polite. But I don't have to worry about them not being happy with me. They are affecting me and my deen and my relationship with Allah. I don't need them. I always tell people, enough shaitan works on me. And enough my nafs works on me. I don't need a helper. You just pull out. Just pull out. If these people are very close to you and you are a strong person, inshallah, you tell them, you are affecting me. I don't want to lose my akhirah. If not, just pull away. Alhamdulillah, there's text messages. You just say, I'm sorry, I can't. And pull and pull and pull. Leave the groups if you are in a group. Don't follow if you are on the social media. Don't follow. Remove yourself from this person and that person. How can we be more optimistic? Why not? And the Jannah is waiting for us. Why? What else? As Sayyidina Bilal, when he died, he was dying. Can somebody be optimistic and he's dying? Right? And what did Sayyidina Bilal said? Ah, aghadan nalqa al-ahibbah, Muhammadun wa sahbih. Allah, tomorrow I am going to meet Muhammad again back, alayhi salatu wasalam, and his companion. Optimistic, optimistic when you focus on your akhirah. If you focus on dunya, it is not easy. If you focus on your akhirah, meaning I'm going through so much difficulties, but I know Allah will reward me for every difficulty I am going, I'm optimistic. Because I'm not focusing on here only. I'm focusing on there. And if I even want to focus on here, and I know my deen, inna ma'al usri yusra, fa inna ma'al usri yusra. Fa inna ma'al usri yusra, inna ma'al usri yusra. With hardship comes ease. 
That's the recipe Allah gave it to us. The believer, the believer is always optimistic. That doesn't mean you don't feel sad. That doesn't mean I'm not going to cry. That doesn't mean I'm not going to feel uncomfortable. But I always know Allah will never let me down. Use this dua. As a Sayyid Hajar said to Sayyidina Ibrahim, Allah will never let me down. Absolutely. He's a Rahman. He's a Rahim. He's a Ra'uf. He will never let me down. Uh, advice for eliminating distractions when trying to focus. It depends. You're focusing on your ibadah, focusing, remove the distractions. Number one, before you eliminate, identify what is the distractions. I'll tell you number one distraction these days are the phones. The, the phones. Remove it. If you are not somebody who you need to have the phone next to you, then keep the phone next to you, but remove the internet. Turn it off. The Wi-Fi and the cellular data. Keep the phone. If they need you, they call you. Number one, you need, before you eliminate anything or bring anything, you have to identify. What is it? What, why I cannot focus? It's usually distractions. What is the distractions? Distractions is I bring it to me. TV is a distraction. YouTube is a distraction, right? Um, um, uh, Netflix is a distraction. People are distractions. Remove them. Everyone listening to me, you want to overcome your anxiety. You want to be optimistic. You want to be remove bad influence. Make sure, make sure you have a one, a one time, a one time in your day where you are alone with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Five minutes, ten minutes, not for the salah, the quick salah that we don't know what we are saying. I'm talking about you sit down. Five, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, and just sit down, shut off everything, and just focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Focus on where you are, where are you going, where are you going, and what are you doing, and see how focused you will be, how productive you will be. How do I reconnect with Allah? Oh, Very nice. Uh, I'm so sorry, Dr. Hafez. So the rooms it's are not- about to close in a bit yes. but thank you so so much Jazakumullah khairan may Allah reward you anyone need to reach any questions feel free you can email me drhaifa at jannahinstitute.org